one of the famous skullette ones. Hey guys, one quick thing before we get going. This was absolutely one of the hottest days of the year. And as such, my GoPros were not working properly. So I have no audio on the first catch. And later in the video, you're gonna see that we didn't get the second catch at all. The GoPros just failed in the high heat. So I'm gonna do a little voiceover here. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. I was gonna just scrap this video, but because we got two fish on a day that was like classic post frontal, bluebird skies, high, flat, calm. I just thought it was something that we could share with you guys. We'll do a couple breakdowns, so let's get into it. Okay guys, here we are. Actually got a pretty nice follow coming right here on the dipstick. And it just kind of rolls off and it goes deep. I could see it under the boat and it actually was hanging a little bit behind the motor. So I tried to give it like a little flip cast and just see if I could pull it close to it. But doing so, I actually fouled up my lure, which you're gonna see a little bit here as I just let this roll ahead. So I keep looking behind the boat, wondering where this fish is, waiting for it to kind of come up. I do believe, if memory serves me correct, I might have seen it down deep right there. So I'm trying to do a deep figure eight just to see if we can get a reactionary strike out of it. And a couple eights, and then usually at that point, if I haven't seen the fish after doing a few deep eights like that, I'll just give it a couple twitches along the surface. And I think right here, see, I seen that it was fouled and I just kind of give it a couple snaps to see if I could unfoul it. But it is what it is. So I saved that footage just because I thought, okay, that's our first interaction with a fish. I'm gonna clean out the lure here. And my next cast, I put almost to the same area I don't really do a long bomb cast here. I just get it out and I still know there's a fish in the area. So my hope is I'm just gonna contact that fish again. And right here, it didn't take long. And I'm almost certain that was the same fish. It was pretty active. Some nice head shakes off of it there. And my buddy Richard was able to get the net real quick. And this one actually slid into the bag. You know, not too bad for us. Did a little bit of thrashing there, but we managed to get it. Hey guys, Glenn McDonald fishing with my buddy Richard here today. First fish come on top line baits. Dipstick in the rainbow trout pattern. It's about a 40. I'm not gonna bother bumping it. Decent looking fish though. Now just back up a little bit, Richard, as you go. <clears throat> Pretty decent fish, a little bit beat up. Looks like a male, about a 40-ish fish. Nothing wrong with that. It's a good start for the day. We'll get her back. And there she goes. Nice. Okay, Richard. <laughs> we did it. Start on track. All right, here's my buddy Richard. We are out. First time in him and I fished together. Saw a couple fish already. It's early in the day. We're going to keep grinding it out. Prime time is going to be around 6 to 8 o'clock, so we're hoping that that's really going to just light things up. But for the afternoon, we're just going to keep spot hopping, and we'll be back with you guys right away. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another breakdown. And this first fish that I get, I'm throwing one of our best baits from last year. I'm throwing the dipstick from Top Line Baits. And this thing absolutely crushed in this type of an environment. Not that it didn't work in, in weeds and stuff, but around rocks and drop-offs, it was just absolutely awesome. And the key here, this is a spot that we've caught a lot of fish over the years but you guys have heard it here a lot on this channel. We like to keep the boat out in the deep water, cast up. We can always go in shallower if we have to. This spot here, we almost it always run the boat out this way and roll right around it so that we're casting in the port side. And we're always trying to hit that transition area where it goes from about six feet down to 12. And if we don't see fish, we'll move in shallower. 
I cast in and we're just trying to hit this deep edge. We got a little bit of current rolling through here. And I first contact that fish near the start of the structure. And then as you guys have seen in the video, it was a few casts later that I actually picked it up a little bit further down, but just absolutely classic spot for fish to sit on that deep break. And then moving forward, you're gonna see that one cast later, Richard cast from the front of the boat kind of to this area here, which we would consider the outside corner. And you're gonna see that he gets hit as soon as his lure hits the water. Unfortunately, it gets off. You guys will see that coming up right away. Okay, guys, like I said, the second fish I get here, we'll do a nice breakdown on this one, kind of explain the spot. But unfortunately, my GoPro just was not capturing anything at the back. It was just literally overheating. So I will show you guys the fish and what I caught it on. And hopefully the breakdown will help you guys kind of decipher what it is that we're doing on this spot. Hey, guys, just hold face it towards me. Hey, guys, Glenn and Richard are back. I just got one on one of my very original Dadson's 10 millimeter that Johnny Dadson gave me. This is one of the famous Skelet ones. Caught it on nine foot Moab 2020 assault stick. Come out of the weeds. It's a nice fish, decent. Not huge, but it's a decent fish. Hitting the eight. some fish we'll get this one back and we'll try and get a couple more today there she goes all right all right richard we did it okay guys that's number two for the day we're gonna keep working we're gonna get some more we'll be right back Fish number two for me on the day, and sadly we didn't get video because it was just so hot out. We had so much camera issues. Just glad to get what we did get. And this one was on Dadson 10 mil, another one of my top lures for 2022. And this one has been absolutely killer for me. Caught a lot of fish on this spot too. Earlier in the year, we caught one way off this outside deep corner. That video is right here. The key to a spot like this, again, to sound like a broken record, is to stay out deep. Get your boat out in that 10, 12 foot area, cast into the weeds. If your boat is sitting right here on this corner, I guarantee you guys are missing fish. Fish love to use these outside corners. And if you are not hitting them with casts, if your boat is on top of the weeds, you're going to be missing fish. There's no two ways about that. So again, we always like to stay way out. And this fish here, I'm actually down around this area here. And I am casting up into, you guessed it, that outside corner, basically right at the end of the weeds. That fish comes out. I wish we would have had the video because he actually hit in a nice figure eight. If we don't see fish on this outside, I will roll around to the inside and cast into it. But a common mistake that I see a lot of people that don't fish shield lakes come up here and do, they just set their boat up a casting distance from shore. So they roll around and that's gonna put them right in that eight foot area and they're gonna cast into shore. By the time they realize that they're in the weeds, it's too late. If your boat's in there, you've probably pushed those fish off of that weed bed. So always 
Use your electronics. Try and find weed beds that are out in deep water like that and keep yourself off of them. Well, guys, Glenn and Richard, we ended up with two on the day. He did have a couple good blow-ups, a couple nice follows. I missed a couple in the eight, but that's the way she goes on a day after a severe windstorm and high skies, bluebird, calm to walk away with a couple and we've seen probably 12 today. We'll take a day like that anytime. And for another really cool video, check out the link right here. And until next time, 54 Bust is out of here. We'll catch you guys out on the water later.